Hi everyone. Um, just wanted you to see number 26 done. You've done it. Um, I just want to go through everything and um, g of x equals x over x squared minus 9. It is all right well the domain okay I'm going to rewrite g of x equals x over x plus 3 times x minus 3. I think that will, there's no canceling that's going to happen here. So um, the domain x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. x equals negative 3 and we don't want this to happen. This can't happen or x equals 3. Okay. So our domain here, we will go from negative infinity to negative 3, not including negative 3, and then on the other side of negative 3 to positive 3, non-inclusive, and then from 3 to infinity. So there's our domain. That always comes in handy when with the things we've got to do with this. Now the next thing I want to do is there are no holes in this um, when you don't simplify when you don't have anything that you can cancel out we're not going to have any holes um, the y-intercept um, that happens when x is 0 so we are going to find g of 0 which is 0 over 0 squared minus 9. 0 over negative 9 is 0. The y-intercept is 0. So this thing's going through the origin. Alright, vertical asymptotes. We will have, um, we've kind of already done that, x equals negative 3 is one of the vertical asymptotes and x equals positive 3 is the other vertical asymptote. The zeros. We get the zeros when we set the numerator equal to 0. Well that's x is the numerator. Set that equal to 0 you got x equals 0. So it is going through 0, 0. It is a y-intercept. It's also the 0. It's also the x-intercept. All right, now any horizontal asymptotes. This is a case where n is less than m. The degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And when that's the case, y equals 0, or the x-axis, is your horizontal asymptote. All right, with all that information, let's make our graph. One, two, three, four, five, six. Negative one, negative. Ah, why negative? Why would I do that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Here. Now let's get negative. And negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. All right, so um, let's plot the vertical asymptotes. X equals negative three. There is a vertical asymptote, and x equals positive 3. There is a vertical asymptote. Um, let's plot the zeros. We have just this one zero. Let's plot the horizontal asymptote, or let's not plot it. Let's just kind of draw it. I'm just going to kind of draw on the x-axis there to remind myself that that is an asymptote. And it only applies really over here. You're allowed to cross on the middle part here. These are actually just um, the limit as x goes to negative infinity and the limit as x goes to positive infinity. It doesn't affect what's in here. So um, 
All right, well, it's time to start getting some other points. We've done everything we can with this. So I'm curious about what g of negative 4 is equal to. And that is negative 4 over, I'm going to use the factored part. I just think it might be a little easier. Negative 4 minus plus 3 and negative 4 minus 3. So I'm looking at negative 4 over negative 1 times negative 7. So that's negative 4 sevenths. Okay, so negative 4, negative 4 sevenths. Here's half. Um, it's a little more than half. So it's right around there. There's a point right around there. All right, that is enough to tell me we got this asymptote and this asymptote, that it's down here. I'm going to go with a different color here. So that curve kind of happens right here. Now, on each, between this asymptote and this zero, let's figure out what g of negative 1 is. And we're looking at negative 1 over negative 1 plus 3 times negative 1 minus 3. Or negative 1 over... This is 2, and this is negative 4. So it's negative 1 over negative 8. It's positive 1 8. So we're like right here with that part. Okay, and it's going to go through here. We know it hits this point. And then at 1, g of 1. Okay, I'm kind of making a mess here. I'm going to come up here and figure out what g of 1 is. And then that's just between this 0 and this 3. g of 1 is 1 over 1 plus 3 times 1 minus 3. You might be wondering. It might have been easier just to leave it as x squared, which I hope we get the same thing. But 4 and negative 2, that's negative 1 eighth. So the point 1, negative 1 eighth is right here. All right. That's enough. We know we're close to an asymptote. We come down here and we probably come back here. We do not cross x again. The only time we cross the x-axis is right here, so it can't go back up over there. So I'm going to draw a curve kind of like this that comes down toward this asymptote. All right. Now, are we going to be here or are we going to be here? That's the last thing to figure out. And I'm going to use 4 and find g of 4. And that is, this time I'll just leave the square in, 4 over 4 squared minus 9. And that's 4 over 7. That's positive. 4 and positive 4, 7. So that's up here. So we're going to come down from this asymptote to here and then toward this asymptote. All right. Just a chance for you to check this. Um, remember, I do have three more examples for you to work on. They are, and whereas I graded the last one just for completion, that you took the notes and you tried to make these graphs, I'll be checking more, a little closer on these next ones on page 323 for number 27, 38, and 44. All right, guys. That is that. Hopefully you had a chance to check those, and we're checking out okay. Now this is just, again, just for you to check your own work.